Hi and welcome to this lesson on the fundamental trig identities. Now what is an identity? Well, um, an identity, a trig identity, is a complex expression equal to a simple expression. Okay, That is an identity, or just roughly uh, a definition of an identity. Now we are going to look at two identities. The first is called the Pythagorean identity. Okay, the Pythagorean identity, and this one makes use of Pythagoras in its proof. That's why it's called that, and it is very simple. It is that sine squared plus cos squared is equal to 1, and the other one is called the quotient identity. Quotient identity. Now, in this one, uh, there we go. In this one, we have that sine theta over cos theta is equal to tan theta. Two very simple statements. Okay, here you can see here's a complex. It's not really complex, but it's a bit more complex than the right-hand side. So a complex expression equal to a very simple expression. On this side as well, we have a quotient. Quotient means... a uh, well, kind of a fraction, something divided by something else, that's quotient. And that's what we have here. Sine theta by cos theta equal to tan theta. Now, let's quickly or briefly look at the proofs for these. And they're really very, very simple. And we prove them from uh, first principles, which means that we use simply definition. Okay, so when we prove something from first principle, it means we're proving them from the definition. From the definitions, we know that sine is y over r, okay, cos is x over r, and tan theta is y over x. Okay, now if with this, I can very easily prove this. Look at that. Okay, sine squared theta means that I take sine theta, which is y over r, and I square it. Cos squared theta means I take x over r, and I square it. And what do I get? Well, obviously, I'm not equaling this to 1. That's what I'm trying to get to. That's why it's called a proof. We start with what we have, and we try and get to what we want. Okay, so let's see. We now have y squared over r squared plus x squared over r squared. Okay, and this is where Pythagoras comes in. Okay, we have y squared plus x squared over r squared. Because the denominators are the same, we can add up. Now, this comes from the fact that if this is our right-angled triangle, then that is y, this is x, and that is r. And now you notice that x and y forms the right-angled sides of this right angle triangle and therefore Pythagoras says that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared and that's what we have here at the top okay so in the numerator we have now r squared in the denominator we have r squared and therefore we have one come on tell me that's not just the most simplest elegant tr proof you've seen in a long while Okay, well let me show you an even simpler one for this side. Again, it is not difficult. All I need to do, proving from first principles, means I use the definitions. So here's my proof for the quotient. And I get sine is y over r. Cos is x over r. When I divide two fractions, I must tip in times. In other words, I take the numerator, I tip the denominator to be r over x, and I simplify. Look at that. That cancels beautifully. Okay, r divided by r is 1 to leave me with y over x, and y over x is equal to tan theta. Okay, very, very simple. Now, the only thing I want to look at now is some conclusions. Okay, some conclusions. First, let's see what else we can deduce from sine squared plus cos squared theta equal to 1. 
Okay, well, let's just play around with this equation a little bit. For example, let's see what happens if we solve for sine. Okay, if we solve for sine, we can get sine squared theta is equal to, and then we just uh, subtract a cos on both sides, a cos squared, so I get 1 minus cos squared theta. Okay, so this is one very, very important Okay, as important as the Pythagorean theorem itself. Very important statement that sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cos squared theta. And we can go a little bit further and say, well, that means sine theta is equal to the square root, plus or minus, okay, the square root of 1 minus cos squared theta. Please get a very good feel for this. You will definitely use this quite a bit. Um, in your work with with uh, trigonome trigonometry, okay. So th the other st um, is if we if we take cos and we solve cos, so we get cos squared theta is of course equal to one minus sine squared theta. Now again, we can. This is extremely important. So let's highlight that. Okay, very important and very simple. That's that's the cool part of this. And if we solve for cos, we see okay, well, cos is the same uh, structure more or less. Okay, it's equal to the square root of one minus sine squared theta. Okay, so very often they tell you, they give you something like this. They say okay, sine theta is equal to n. Okay, find cos theta. Okay. And they said, well, I know cos theta is equal to square root of 1 minus sine squared theta. And all I need to do is replace sine theta with an n. So I have 1 minus n squared. Okay, so this would be plus minus depending on whether n is, uh, uh, sorry, whether sine is positive or negative or n is positive or negative. Okay, but it's probably best just to keep the plus minus there all the time unless you have a clear idea in which quadrant we are working okay but that is it that is probably the best way of making use of these formulas but there's other applications as well let's go over to this one this one the quotient identity has quite a few deductions we can make for it so let's just write it down the very important sine theta over cos of theta is equal to tan of theta. Okay, so for the first one, let's just imagine this is tan theta over 1. Okay, so if I have x over y is equal to n over m, okay, it's also true that y over x is equal to m over n. Okay, if I swap the left hand side's uh, numerator and denominator, I can do it the same on the right hand side. So for example, 1 over 2 is equal to 2 over 4. So the same goes for 2 over 1 must therefore be 4 over 2. Okay, you can go and check that. Pause the video and make sure you understand that. But uh, that, that's my first conclusion is that if I have sine over cos, I have tan. And if I have cos theta over sine of theta, I get what is called 1 over tan theta, okay, simply swapping it around, but this one has actually a special name called cot, cot theta, cot theta, that's cotangent, and we learned that co cot theta is actually tan uh, 90 degrees minus theta, okay, um, and you know, tan of 90 degree degrees minus theta is actually sine of 90 degrees minus theta over cos of 90 degrees minus theta from, from the quotient formula that we just learned or quotient identity and cos sine of 90 minus is cos theta and cos of 90 minus is sine theta okay so obviously all of this is, is just extra you don't need to know this for the purpose of this course okay for the purpose of this course this part is is not necessary to know what is important to know is that cos of a sine is equal to 1 over tan okay um, how about another one? Let's look at multiplying both sides with a cos. In other words, solving for sine. Okay, what happens if I solve for sine? Then sine theta is equal to tan theta times cos theta. See another identity? Here we have a complex and then we have a simple trig identity. Okay, uh, one more. Let's divide Let's solve for cos. What do we get if we solve for cos? Well, we divide this one both. 
with 10, so in other words, if I divided 10 on this side, okay, if we divide with 10 theta on this side, and we would divide 10 theta on that side, cancels, cancels, so we get that cos theta is equal to sine theta divided by 10 theta. Okay, so let me just, I've scratched all over the place, let me just summarize those three briefly. So we have the tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta. Then we had that sine theta was tan theta times cos theta. And then we had that cos theta is sine theta over tan theta. Okay, and these for all form part what we call corollaries. I struggle to pronounce that word. But they are called corollaries of the quotient identity. Corollary just meaning like a conclusion, something we can draw from a, a, another statement. Now, do you have to go and study all of this? No, don't go study all of this, guys. Please don't. All you need to know is that sine theta is y over r. Cos theta is x over r. And tan theta is y over x. And then you can go and deduce all of this. Okay, maybe you don't have time in the exam to go and do that. Then please know this very much off by heart. Okay, the Pythagorean identity as well as the quotient identity. Two very important and very useful identities to know for the coming work. Well, I'll see you in the next couple of videos where I'm going to use this in a few simple and a bit more complex examples. See you then.